Anastasio back at you here. Sorry for the little bit of a break there. Uh, I was not feeling very well. Then my whole family got sick, and then this, that, and the other. And uh, yeah, long story short, back at you here. And a lot of people have been telling me that they really like their free play series that I have started, but I haven't really done a video on it in a long time. And I owe you all an explanation. And here it is. And so in the game, there is a daily reward system and on day one you get frost witch and i'm just at the castle clash wikia site here uh you get frost witch then you get some slimes and you get painda then you get some blue oozes the crystal ooze then you get the purple ooze etc etc and then on the 21st day you get paladin etc etc and then you get druid so you do get two legendary heroes for free by simply logging in for 30 consecutive days why am i mentioning this i am mentioning this because i right now am at a point where i really don't want to spend my 39,000 honor badges now how do i have 39,000 honor badges it's pretty simple i'm not really doing anything it's just that because I've named my account Mucky, I'm earning 50 honor badges per hour. I am occasionally running quests, and that also gives honor badges, and rating gives honor badges, and things like that too. So, I'm not playing because I don't really want to invest any of my honor badges into these heroes. Now, I did unlock. And what do I mean by invest? Let me just back up a little bit. Executioner. So you see the little shiny star here? This means that he's a one star hero, which allows him to go from level 1 to level 20. Then they stop. They just stop at level 20, and you have to upgrade them. How do you upgrade them? You click the upgrade button, and then you spend gold, which is the easy thing to get. Fires, which is the easy thing to get. You just need to get 10 fires in dungeons. And then... Here it is, 1,000 honor badges. This is what slows people down because they do not have a good source of getting honor badges apart from the 50 per hour and from Here Be Monsters. And What I've decided to do is I'm really just not playing on this account until I get Druid and Paladin. I am three days away from Paladin and then I have another nine days to wait until I get Druid. And then I think that's when it makes sense to really start playing. Now, in my right mind, I can't really tell you to start playing Castle Clash, but then don't really start playing for another 30 days, right? Because it's just kind of awkward to have to say that, but if you really don't get any good heroes with your gem rolls, right? So this now that I got... 293 gems. What I mean by gem rolls, you go to your hero altar and you go higher with gems and you do your random roll. Now it's asking me, do you want to unlock a new hero slot? I do not. The reason why it's asking me that is because my hero altar is full because I've been simply doing the daily rewards and I don't actually want to give anyone, I don't want to consume these slimes because I want to save them for paladin and druid, mainly druid. I do want to get that druid up to four of nine, which is very important. And so I think I've been sending them towards Painda because he does have a tenacity four, which increases his hit points. So I'll probably just, let's just clear out two of these, maybe three of these, and go back, higher with gems, and higher up R1. Hey, great, a Painda. I'll take my Painda, and I'll consume the other Painda. At this point, though, we might as well look at the Painda. People always criticize me for looking at my blues. I don't think it's ever a bad idea to look at your blues, especially when you're starting out and you just, you know, you just want to learn the game and see the other talents that you got. When you do consume them, you can see here, normally when I consume a blue here, like when I consume the Werewolf, you get 200. However, when, you can, when a Painda consumes a Painda, they get double. So whenever a hero consumes itself, it gets double. So that's why I'm getting 400 each, which is 800. This is ability points working on pain does. What is pain does ability called? Lightning, which is a deals do damage to everyone right around it. It's an area of effect, but it's kind of a silly one because 
they have to be beating on Painda to be damaged by Painda, which means Painda's probably not living. <laughs> so it's kind of one of those catch-22 abilities where it's like, for it to be effective, they need to be beating on Painda, but Painda needs to actually survive. Which is nice that I have tenacity. That's why I'm actually investing a little bit. I normally would never invest into Painda, but, you know, if you got a tenacity for uh, a Painda, hey, not bad. Now, about where I'm at with the base, actually, let's look at this achievement. Lose 20 attacks against other players. Yeah, that's mainly what I've been doing is just running raids, player versus player raids, and I've just been working on my walls. I'm trying to get everything up to at least a level 4. The end goal is level 5, but here we monster A will work on my base, which is, again, the Peon Clover. And we're going to level that up so that all these walls are level 4. And we're going to do the same thing here. Spend 21,000. And I'll do the same here. Full row, level up, etc. So this is a level 3 wall, the white one. And then sort of the tan one with the... I guess it's a gold slash orange top, that ring around it here. That's going to be a level 4. End goal here is to be a level 5 wall. You can also see level 2, 3, 4, 5 sitting right here by my town hall. Just to kind of show you. These pieces would normally go right here. And you can see why. You can see if someone's raiding against me, they can drop in this little weak point here. And uh, have an easy victory. Well, they're going to have an easy victory anyways, just because my base is so weak and my heroes are so weak. But I have my mana vaults up to level 6. I have my gold vaults up to level 8. Most of my hero bases are level 3. I'm just kind of giving you the baseline of where I'm at, guys. Just for those following along. Again, I have not raised my mana mill or my gold mine. They are both at level 1. If you did, it's not a huge mistake. I did drop down a relic call. That's because I was getting the quest that said to purchase magic quest. And you can't obviously achieve that quest unless you have a relic call down, which is level 1. Guild hall level 1, because it is asking... I do get the quest that asks me to donate shards to a guild however I'm not in a guild so I can never achieve that quest and that's slightly annoying so I will have to guild up here and I think what I'm going to do is join one of the dirty empire guilds if they'll have me which they will because I will force them to how about that and I will probably join either peon or buried one of those two and I need 9,000 might for Buried. And for Peon, I need 10,000 might. They both have about 20 slots open. And, hey, we'll get there when we get there. Other than that, what else we got? So Heroes Altar level 1, or two army camps at level 1, Training Center. I am going the Hunter line. And I am going to bring my hunters from level 4 to level 5. However, I need 100,000 gold. So, let's go get 100,000 gold, which I'm halfway there. And so we will basically just smurf it up. What does smurf it up mean? Oh, I don't want to lose that guy. I guess I have magic, though. Smurf it up means you simply attack for resources. We are sniping resources. It is somewhat of a lowly tactic them by lowly people, such as my lowly self. <laughs> uh, there is 30,000 gold sitting in this base. They do have some uh, high-ish level towers, nothing too crazy. And they don't have any army camps, and they don't really have any heroes, so we're going to take this one out. This is one of those ones you just let it ride, let it run. Let it uh, take its time and get the full win, 100% win, because you will get experience there. And again, I'm keeping all of my heroes primarily capped at 20, except Panda's one I let go. I do not believe I will be using Cyclops, Executioner, or Frost Witch long term. However, I will be using likely Marksman and Panda. And of course, I will be purchasing at some point engineer who is my favorite ordinary hero. I just don't have enough shards to purchase engineer. 
I want to say that it takes 37 shards to purchase Engineer. Let's see if I was right about that. Enter, Hire with Shards, Ordinary, 36. So once I get there, oh, wait a minute, how do I have 47 shards? So sweetness, I have 47 shards, must be from questing. From questing you do get shards. So that would make sense. I can purchase Engineer. I knew this video would show you something interesting, guys. I knew it. Come on now, guys. I knew it. Tenacity, that'll have to do for now. Let's also bring down from the shop resources warehouse. We are going to start doing some raids there. That's going to get us merit badges, which will allow us to purchase talent rerolls so that we don't have to spend gems. And I now have 163 gems. At this point, what everyone should always be doing with their excess gems, and this is basically the blanket statement, guys. If you have excess gems, you should always roll for heroes by hiring with gems and random rolling. And what you want to get the best case scenario for you is to achieve a pumpkin duke. That's the best best outcome out of every hero in the game. That is still the best one. I'm going to keep going here. I am going to take this right now. I'm going to take this sucker right now to a three of nine. That is how much confidence I have in Engineer. I simply know that Engineer is the man. Okay? He is awesome. 3 of 9 deals 170% damage to all enemies in the area. Tenacity is not great, but it is acceptable. And we are going to sub out. Oh, jeez. I don't it's either Frost Witch or Executioner. Let's just look. We got Revitalize. Yeah, it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be Frost Witch. We're gonna sub out Frost Witch for my level one engineer. And let's just run a quick raid and get some experience here. And you'll see this a lot too, guys. You'll see this here. See how all these heroes here are stuck at level 20? A lot of people in this game do not actually know that you can re release them from the level 20 restriction. They think that they hit level 20 and they just sit there forever at level 20. And you'll see bases with level 10 walls and level 16 buildings and things like that that still have level 20 heroes because they simply do not know that you should upgrade them. That's the highest priority is to upgrade your heroes. Your buildings are not the highest priority. This game should be called Hero Clash, right? It really isn't about your castle. <laughs> so that's... Just remember that. Focus all of your energy, all of your energy, all of your time on upgrading and developing your heroes. Now, of course, all my heroes have been stuck at... All my heroes have been stuck at level 20, but that's simply because I don't have the heroes that I want. The heroes that I want, let me just set them over here. Okay, it's not him. Just kidding. The heroes that I want, I have two of them. Okay, I only have two of them, I'll say. Engineer and Marksman are two of the five heroes that are going to be basically my permanent team unless I happen to roll, luckily, a different hero. They are my, my one and two slot, let's just say. My third slot's going to be Paladin. That's Let's just call him my tank for simplicity's sake. He's got a lot of hit points, and he continues to have a lot of hit points. Not the most in the game, but he's acceptable. And then, of course, Druid to heal my whole team. Once you have those four, those four become a good core. And you can actually run Hiri Monster, I think, all the way up to D, maybe E, with those four heroes. The fifth hero, for right now, the only recommendation I'll say is that it should be someone with an area of effect, meaning not 
Assassin, not Frost Witch, because they just deal a burst damage to one target. It would be better for you to pick something like Painda or Cyclops, because they are the two blues with an area of effect, which means they do damage to all the enemies around them. Why is that important? It's important for when we start running Here Be Monster, where your heroes will have to clear a large amount of troops and heroes in each wave so it's very helpful you'll see engineer lob a grenade and just take out like 20 troops he is that good he is really good he is like the poor man spirit mage and he is excellent and he is by far right now the most important hero on my team even though he's the lowest level <laughs> that's just because i just got him i had no idea i had that many shards guys come on who would have thought uh, whenever you do have a hero that you've just received, for whatever reason, the third dungeon in on dungeon 1 through 3, the first dungeon, second dungeon, third dungeon, the third one in always seems to give some sort of inordinate experience for its difficulty. Meaning, inordinately high experience given its difficulty. So what I tend to do is I drop all my troops in and then I drop engineer in. I've shown this many times on Dungeon 2, which is my favorite place to do it, but my account isn't at a spot where I can say I can run that consistently because I don't have centaurs yet. I just have hunters, the little dudes with the green, the little hoochie mamas there shooting the little bows, the little fire arrows, the little dirty arrows. <laughs> and you saw, yeah, I got 109 experience. Now let me, let me demonstrate what I mean by inordinate. 109 experience. Okay, let's go to the one right before it. This is the second dungeon in. Okay, and I'm going to drop all my troops. I'm, just, I'm kind of being sure to not drop my other heroes because only the heroes you deploy divide experience. So I want to deploy just engineer plus all the troops. So now obviously this wasn't very difficult, but let's just see the experience difference. Okay, because it's about the same difficulty as the last one. I mean, uh, that was pretty easy, and the last one was pretty easy. So 96. Okay, 96 experience. That's good. Not as much as I got before, but again, it was theoretically a little easier. And then let's go to the fourth one in here. And then I'm going to drop... I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to drop all my hunters in. You can click and hold, but you just don't want to... Because if I just keep going, I'll drop pain in right there. I don't want pain down. I want engineer. You can see engineer's level 7 right now. Because engineer is getting all of that, 100% of the experience I get on this dungeon. So that's why he's leveling. Somewhat, not quickly, but decently. So now we're the fourth one in. Last one I got 109 experience. And this one was, I'll say this one was a lot more difficult because it's got the engineer and the engineer's awesome engineer's the man if that grenade got lobbed there all my troops would be dead <laughs> so a lot more difficult but just a little bit more experience and that becomes and once we get to dungeon 2 it becomes a little bit more extreme where it just starts to get really more difficult and you can't just drop 15 you can see I lost five hunters there from 20 down to 15. So here, now I'm in the basically the fifth one in. And you can see that I'm losing hunters. Now my engineer is up to level 9, so it's I might be okay here. But then you got Angel there. You see Angels here in the background. And you got some magic troops and two towers. I mean, it's almost four times as difficult as the third one in. And it's not four times as much experience. Look at this. I just lost another hunter. So the reason I like the third, for some reason, the third one in on Dungeon 1 and Dungeon 2 is just very easy compared to the fourth, fifth, or sixth ones in. And tends to give a decent amount of experience. So that's why I do that. I mean, you don't have to do that. But I do have some books saved up too that I'll use. So let's just go ahead after this dungeon run. I will take this engineer up to level 20 just by using one of those books. And those are the books you get by completing the quest. I did say I wouldn't rec I would record all gameplay, but it was a little bit too difficult to do that cuz I was really only logging in to do that daily reward quest and every now and then 
I would do some of the the questing here too and I just didn't have the ability to record all the time and I did want to keep the account somewhat on track but I mean I really didn't do anything extreme or anything I mean look at that the, the, the I didn't hire new heroes for example so now we got our engineer and let's go to consume earn experience and look at that I'll give them seven levels I'm kinda over I'm sort of overshooting here. Awesome. Level 20 engineer. Beauty. That's a thing of beauty right there. Let's go see what that makes him look like. Have to kind of back out and come back in. Oh, the old keg on the head. The old auto beer siphon. Sweet. 317 attack, 1643 hit points. He attacks once per second. Movement speed 145. And we are going to upgrade. What we really care about, what we care about, is that damage, which is now 482, deals 170% damage. Let's just say 200%. Let's just say two times damage. Let's say 1,000 damage to all enemies in the area. That'll basically take out, if you just come here and look at training and go to Hunter, and you look at the hit points that a Hunter has, even at level 5 would be 590 hit points, right? Meaning, if a hunter, or a, sorry, a uh, engineer were to lob a grenade right here at these hunters, all of them are going to die. And that makes it possible for me to now beat Here Be Monster A. I could not beat Here Be Monster A with engineer not on my team. I've tried. I tried five, six, ten times. I couldn't do it. Before I run my first Here Be Monster, which let's just say will be in the next video because this one's getting long, I will take, I will give him six books and take him all the way up to level 40. Okay? That's how much I believe in Engineer. He is the main man on my team. Now, I can't upgrade him because I don't have 50 flames, fires, torches. <laughs> I do have the 3,000 honor badges, though, but I don't have the torches. So how do you get those? Is you go to the dungeon and keep going in the dungeon. So I need to beat uh, 27 flames. So I need to essentially... Or fires. I need to basically unlock dungeon. All of dungeon 1 and some of dungeon 2, I believe. So we'll save that for future videos, but I will, uh, at the start of the next video, the next part in the series, I will go ahead and run my Peon Clover against Here Be Monster A with Engineer. As always, keep it dirty and dirty up.